Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Good afternoon and Merry Christmas and welcome to a special episode of The Angry Astronaut. And no, I haven't lost my mind. I just dropped my son off here in Denver and now I'm going to be spending the holidays alone. And rather than do that, I'm going to go ahead and sing you guys some Christmas carols over the course of the next couple of days. I'll be putting them onto YouTube shorts or if I lose all sense of self-respect, I may create a TikTok account. Who knows? But I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. Let's move on to the issue with space debris, something I talk about all the time on this channel. There has been a significant development in the U.S. government, at least to some degree, a directive from the Senate uh essentially instructing NASA to come up with some sort of solution or at least explore solutions to the space debris problem, addressing at least the worst and most dangerous pieces of space junk that uh, endanger the ISS satellites and our other activities in low Earth orbit. But there are many problems with this plan. So, as you also know, I talk a great deal about what Europe is doing to address this problem. So, I want to give you guys an example of what a country with a much, much smaller economy, a space budget for their space agency that's one twentieth the size of NASA, and yet they have a very good plan that they're already in the process of putting into action, and perhaps this would be a good thing to emulate. And then afterwards, I'm going to give you all the details of what's happening with our own plans of getting rid of space junk and just how little support the government is providing to NASA to deal with this serious problem. And we're going to get started on all of this in just a moment. Although the jury is still out on what exactly happened with the Soyuz spacecraft that caused the current crisis that's threatening the lives of astronauts on the ISS at this very moment, I have little doubt as to what the culprit is. I believe that a piece of space debris struck the spacecraft, damaging its cooling system and exposing the fluid to space. We are fortunate indeed that this incident did not occur while the spacecraft was attempting to re-enter the atmosphere. That could have led to the destruction of the spacecraft and all on board. But regardless of the cause, I believe that we have been dodging a disaster involving space debris for some time. And the UK has had a plan to deal with this problem in spite of their relatively limited budget for a considerable period of time. They've allotted a hundred million pounds over the course of the next three years to try to deal with this problem. And rather than try to explain it to you, I'm going to go ahead and dredge up my interview with Dr. Camilletti, which I carried out a couple of months ago with the UK Space Agency to get a detailed description of Britain's plan to start dealing with this issue. Um, what are the preferred methods that the UK Space Agency and ESA are looking at right now for debris mitigation? What are the best ways of getting that stuff out of there? So uh, the, one of the major things that UKSA is doing, and one of the things that I'm heavily involved in at UKSA is active debris removal, so, so-called ADR. So we, we've just um, announced £4 million worth of funding for two companies to do parallel what we call Phase B studies. Um, in the UK, so that will enable them to develop 
mission concepts for active debris removal uh, up to the preliminary design stage. And these are concepts where you launch a, uh, a mission and it, we've mandated that they've got to design a mission that goes after two UK registered but defunct satellites and deorbits them. But the chaser spacecraft that does that deorbiting is also refurbishable. Okay, so it does two, then it goes back up to a parking orbit and it's ready to be refueled. So all being well, it can go after, you know, two, three, four more. So it's, you know, it, it's focus on sustainability, not just putting one satellite up there to remove another satellite. You know, we really want, you know, to get, you know, bang for our buck, as it were. We want to launch one chaser satellite and bring down multiple satellites. Um, they've got to be defunct UK satellites. And another key thing is that, they've got to be unprepared for deorbiting. So what I mean by that is that nowadays, some satellites launch with kind of grapple features and various functionality or design elements that enable them to be removed. But 20, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, satellites weren't designed that way. So we've made it quite difficult for, these, for, the, for the companies we're funding. We said, you've got to go after satellites that you know, they're not going to help you, they're, they're defunct. They're not, they can't manoeuvre and they've got you know, no grapple features, but you've still got to grab them and, and, and deal with them. Now, is Astroscale one of those companies that you've yeah, selected? it's Astroscale and ClearSpace are, are the two, and they're, they're running in parallel. Um, they've got you know, um, different concepts. Um, so we're in this phase now where we're, we're relying on them to come up with concepts, trade off different options, convince us what one works best. Um, show us that they've taken into account this need to be refurbishable. Um, and also, we've also got to be convinced that, you know, the mission isn't going to create more debris. You know, that, that it would be ironic if you do right. an active debris removal mission and you create more debris. So it's got to not only um, convince us that it can go after these two, um, two or more satellites, we want to make sure that it's reliable and it's safe and it doesn't exacerbate the problem. So we'll be looking over what they do with a fine tooth comb to make sure you know that's all looked after. Have they presented any design concepts to you that you can share, or is that still proprietary? Um, it's it, it, it the the phase that we're going into now. Obviously, I, I can't really talk about because it's a, a competition. But but this is the phase B, and we did fund them for phase zero and phase A, and. Um, you know, we, we are very happy with what they did um, in, in, in those phases. Obviously, I can't go into detail because they're both competing against sure. e each other. But, they, you know, they both did a, a really tremendous job. And I think when those, um, when those results do become public, I think everyone will be really excited by what they've done. So here's what pisses me off. Now, I think we're all behind when it comes to this problem. We should have been dealing with this years ago, but that being the case, as you can see, Great Britain has now reached stage two of their debris mitigation process. They went through an initial stage of testing with a couple of different competing private companies that are looking to address this issue, and now they're in the second phase with cash awards being held out as a sort of incentive to these private companies to start dealing with the problem. It's small scale and restricted only to UK satellites, but nevertheless, they are making progress. On top of that, they also have a budget for this project, a substantial one actually, as I said before, a hundred million pounds over the course of the next three years, and also the European Space Agency has a particular line item in their budget budget that's called space safety, and this is money being allocated to protect the planet against near-Earth objects, asteroids, comets, that sort of thing, but also to deal with the problem of space debris and the threat that it represents to everything we're doing in low Earth orbit, whether we're talking about the ISS or these enormous satellite constellations we're putting into place, GPS, communications, whatever, everything is at risk right now because of space debris and the European Space Agency has a particular budget, a specific budget rather, for this issue. NASA does not have the same thing. However, the Senate passed by unanimous consent on December 21st what's called the Orbital Sustainability or Orbits Act. The bill was introduced by Senator John Hickenlooper of Colorado, my home state by the way, 
Along with the bipartisan support of Senator Cynthia Loomis of Wyoming and also Senators Maria Cantwell of Washington and Roger Wicker of Mississippi. And what it will do is direct NASA, working with other government agencies and the private sector, to publish a list of debris objects that pose the greatest immediate risk to the safety and sustainability of orbiting satellites and on-orbit activities. However, here's a problem. The bill doesn't really define how to calculate that risk or how many objects need to be included in the list. And by the way, that's not the biggest problem with this bill. On top of that, it also requires that NASA establish an active debris removal remediation program. It will make awards for the development of technologies leading to the remediation of selected orbital debris identified in the list, including demonstration missions to remove the debris. That sounds really fantastic, but here's the problem. It doesn't authorize any specific funding for NASA or or other agencies to carry out the debris removal or other activities besides noting that the work would be subject to appropriation. So even though NASA is being directed to deal with the problem, to come up with plans and get companies engaged and contracted to deal with space debris, there's no funding for it. It will all have to be approved on an as-needed basis. And in addition to that, the whole bill hasn't even gotten through the House yet either. That's not going to happen until 2023. So what this means is that the United States and NASA have yet to begin a process that Great Britain has already made substantial progress with. They're already on stage two of an active program with companies already contracted, already paid for, whereas NASA has yet to even begin. As a matter of of fact, the bill hasn't even passed through the House yet, so NASA hasn't even received specific instructions on what they're supposed to do yet. In addition to that, NASA doesn't have a specific budget line item for this problem either. They don't have a space safety line item. Well, they do, but it has nothing to do with space debris. It's rather associated with keeping astronauts safe during space missions, that sort of thing. So they don't have a specific budget for the problem, they haven't even been directed as to what they're supposed to be doing yet, and all the while, space debris has probably already created a state of chaos on the ISS with astronauts' lives being put at risk, and as I've mentioned many times before, this is the least of our problems in low Earth orbit. A far more significant syndrome, the Kessler syndrome, as I've talked about many times, don't really need to rehash that again, but it is a clear threat. It's something that could happen and something we need to take very seriously. And yet, at this point, the United States, who is the best suited to deal with this problem, they have the biggest budget, they have the best access to space, they have the most mature space program, we should be taking the lead on this problem, not the United Kingdom. And yet, that's not the case. It is the UK and the Europeans who are leading the way, while the United States and NASA are playing catch-up and do not have a specific budget to deal with this crisis. This is unacceptable, and it's just a function of all the bureaucratic nonsense that happens in Congress. Congress is more than happy to talk about problems, to say, that they're going to deal with problems, to make a really good show of things, and then not allocate any budget to it. We have an enormous multi-trillion dollar budget about to go through the House and the Senate that's going to put this government even further in debt, and yet we can't allocate even the same amount of money to this crisis that the United Kingdom is. That is not only unacceptable, it's downright embarrassing. But fortunately, we at least do have legislation moving through Congress to deal with this problem, but it definitely needs to be modified. NASA undoubtedly has the scientific, technical, and engineering expertise to deal with this crisis, but they need some direction. They need to know where their budget is going to come from, if they need to divert some of the money that they have 
allocated to certain programs, to dealing with space debris, then so be it. But they need to know where this money is going to come from. Preferably, it would be good if the Congress would just give them the necessary money to start dealing with the crisis, but thus far, that hasn't happened, and we don't even have a completed bill or law signed into action at this moment. Hopefully, we will in January, and then the United States will have taken its first step to standing side by side with Europe in cleaning up this problem that threatens all of our future ambitions in space. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. We are well on our way to 100,000 guys. I would really like to see that. Keep your eyes open for some more Christmas carols coming your way over the next couple of days. Also, check the description for various ways to support my content. And as always, stay angry about space.